Thus far in IB thermal physics, we have been discussing how things heat up or cool down when you mix them together. But that's relatively boring because we've not been discussing how they freeze and melt, evaporate, boil, and they go through all these different phase changes, which can be a little bit more complex. So get ready. Phase changes are what we are about to talk about. In order to better understand the difference between solids and liquids and gases, you want to think about uh, what's happening on a molecular level, which is what we call uh, this kinetic theory. You may want to take some time and draw this diagram, pause it if you don't have it drawn already. Now for a solid, you've got all these particles that are locked in place, and they can vibrate around, but they cannot move past each other. Past each other. So for solids, you want to make a note that these are molecules that are locked in place and they are relatively close to each other. Uh, most solids cannot be compressed very much. Something like a sponge, that doesn't quite count because when you compress it, air all goes out. We're talking solids like a chunk of iron or a chunk of ice. Those do not compress very much unless they have some air bubbles in them. Now, liquids, these are also molecules that are close together because you can't compress most liquids very well, but they are free to move past each other. And so you've got molecules that are slurming all around past each other, uh, allowing it to change shape or take the shape whatever container that you have it in. Now gases on the other hand are crazy far apart. There's lots of open space in between those molecules, which is why you can take a bunch of gas and compress it into a cylinder, let's say. If you're going scuba diving, you can press all that air into your cylinder, uh, and they're also free to go all over the place, as you know from the fact that gases do expand. Take a minute and read through all of these other properties of solids, liquids, and gases. During a phase change, we need to think of what's happening to each of the molecules, especially based on their type of motion. So let's say oh, uh, that we're going to put some heat underneath solid. Let's say you've got a chunk of ice, and it's in some sort of canister, and you have some fire underneath it that's going to heat it up. Now that is going to start making the temperature of the ice. Let's say your ice is at negative 10 Celsius. These little water molecules are going to start vibrating more and more and more, and their velocity of that vibration is actually going to speed up. Because what you should know is that temperature is going to depend on the average kinetic energy per molecule. Add temperature, their kinetic energy, their velocity is going to go up. So it's going to keep going up from negative 10 to negative 9, negative 3, negative 1. Everything's getting faster and faster. And then as you start getting up to zero, some of these bonds are going to ch -ch 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 break. These are hydrogen bonds. And a few of these molecules are going to start slurming all over the place. Now, you might think, well, can the temperature then of the ice start going up to 1, 2, 3 degrees Celsius? It actually cannot, because as soon as one of these guys uh, starts to vibrate, let's say at a crazy fast vibration rate, it's going to bump into one of these guys and it's going to give that extra energy to breaking bonds. And so the extra energy is not used to make them vibrate faster anymore. Instead, the extra energy goes in to breaking bonds. And so that is why uh, this temperature cannot go past zero Celsius for frozen H2O that doesn't have salt in it or anything crazy like that. Because every extra little bit of energy does not go into making it vibrate faster. It goes into breaking the hydrogen bonds and turning into liquid. Similar situation when you're heating liquid water. I put some fire underneath uh, a cup of water and I'm going to get it up to 10 degrees Celsius, then 20. And every increase in temperature is going to make these velocity uh, arrows a little bit bigger. And they keep going and going and going, but then I get up to 100 degrees Celsius, and now we start getting freedom, and all of these little molecules start breaking 
uh, the bonds that hold them together as a liquid, and they start becoming a gas. And at that point, the increase in temperature stops because the extra energy that you're putting in no longer goes to increasing average kinetic energy. Instead, it goes to increasing potential energy and freeing these molecules from a liquid phase into a gaseous phase. So you're now increasing potential energy, no longer kinetic energy. Now with a gas, you can increase the temperature of a gas as far as you want. So you're probably not going to do anything so crazy as to put your gaseous water into a plasma phase. That would be quite impressive. If your teacher loves you, he or she will have you take a block of ice and with hopefully some constant stirring, put a thermometer or a even better temperature probe in there and you'll be able to see the temperature change uh, over uh, time, let's say. Uh, in fact, instead of thinking of this as total energy, let's think of this as time on my x-axis. And you will see as time goes past, temperature will start to climb, then it'll flatline, it'll climb again, it'll flatline, and then as you turn it into a gas, you may not get to this phase, uh, but it will start to climb again eventually. This part might be hard to see. It might be missing if you do this in class. It probably will be. Uh, and in fact, this part, if you do this in class, might also be missing. But in a perfect world, let's say that we can get those going. Pause it, and during that pause, I want you to try and label which are the phase changes in this situation. Now, phase changes are going to be marked by a constant temperature. So from B to C, this is going to be our melting phase. And from D to E, this is going to be our boiling phase. And now, if you can also pause it, take a minute and write down some sort of statement about what's happening at all of these segments. Now, hopefully you have noticed that this A to B part may not work out if you were to do this in the lab because the ice that you are dealing with might already be at zero degrees Celsius. But let's say you just took it out of a really cold freezer and you had your temperature probe frozen into it somehow, which would be kind of tedious. But uh, that solid is going to be continuing to heat up. It's all going to remain ice. And as you put in energy, that just goes to make the molecules vibrate faster. Now, B to C, which is where you would probably start, because it's already going to probably be at zero Celsius, that's when the extra energy that you go put in there is going to be breaking bonds, and it's going to start the melting process. Then, at C to D, which is going to be up around in here, that is when it's all at a liquid phase. You shouldn't get much temperature rise until it's all been liquefied. Then the extra energy is not breaking bonds, now the extra energy is making all those water droplets slurm around faster with a larger kinetic energy. Now, once it gets up to 100 Celsius, only then should it start boiling. And now the extra energy is breaking liquid bonds and making molecules fly off at crazy rates into a gaseous phase. And you're increasing the potential energy, no longer a temperature increase. And that water will always, always, always stay at 100 degrees Celsius until it's all completely gone. Now, most of that steam in the lab will leave, and you won't be able to heat it anymore. But what most people don't know is that if you can keep that steam in one place, you can superheat it. And you can get steam well above 100 degrees Celsius as long as you can contain it somehow. Now, you would need a kind of a special apparatus to make that happen, but you can get steam up to... 130, 140 degrees Celsius if you keep heating it and then you add more energy to increase the kinetic energy of your steam.